Astronomy, the scientific study of celestial objects, such as stars, planets, and galaxies. Astronomy has a large impact on how we perceive the world today. Numerous people have studied and created their own theories of how the solar system and its bodies operate. Famous astronomers such as Galileo Galilei, Johannes Kepler, Tycho Brahe, and many more contribute their intellectual ideas to the vast study of astronomy. But in this video, we will be focusing on Nicholas Copernicus and his impact in the world. Let's start with number one, the Ptolemaic model or the geocentric model. In astronomy, the geocentric model, also known as geocentrism, is a superseded description of the universe with the Earth at the center. Under the geocentric model, the Sun, Moon, stars and planets all circled Earth. The geocentric model served as the predominant description of the cosmos in many ancient civilizations such as those of Aristotle and Ptolemy. Two observations supported the idea that the Earth was the center of the universe. First, Sun appears to revolve around the Earth once per day, while the Moon and the planets have their own motions. They also appeared to revolve around the Earth about once per day. The stars appeared to be on celestial sphere, rotating once each day along an axis through the north and south geographic poles of the Earth. Second, the Earth does not seem to move from this perspective of an earthbound observer. It appears to be solid, stable, and unmoving. Ancient Greek and ancient Roman and medieval philosophers usually combine the geocentric model with a spherical Earth. The ancient Jewish Babylonians pictured a flat Earth with a dome, shaped rigid canopy named firmament placed over. However, the ancient Greeks believed that the motions of the planets were circular and not elliptical of views. That was not challenged until neither culture until the 17th century through the synthesis of theories by Copernicus and Kepler. The astronomical predictions of Ptolemy's geocentric model were used to prepare astrological and astronomical charts for over 1,500,000 years. The geocentric model held sway into the early modern age but from the late 16th century onward, it was gradually suppressed by the Eurocentric model of Copernicus, Galileo, and Kepler. There was much resistance to the translation between their two theories. Christians were reluctant to reject theory that agreed with Bible passage. During the 16th and 17th centuries, there was a scientific revolution. In those times, there are learnings that are never known before. In astronomy, there is Nicholas Copernicus, and is also the proponent of the theory which is the heliocentric theory. This model depicts the Sun as being in the center, having the other planets rotate around it. Nicholas Copernicus felt that the theory of Ptolemy and Aristotle has mathematical problems and observational inconsistencies. So he decided to propose a model in which the Sun is the center of the universe and the planets and the stars revolve around it. You're probably thinking, who developed the heliocentric model? Well, the model was developed by a famous mathematician and astronomer named Nicholas Copernicus. Copernicus was the father of modern astronomy through his observations of the galaxy and its heavenly bodies, we learned more about astronomy and how the galaxy moves. He was born on 1473 in Poland. He was born into a wealthy family which gave him great education. He first began his educational interest in painting, math, and even medicine. Later in his life, he began studying astronomy. The church believed in the Ptolemaic model because it did not contradict the biblical text. Speaking out against the model would also be speaking out against the Bible and the teachings of the church. When the manuscript of Copernicus was published, it made an impact on the views of the people. Because of the manuscript, 
the Copernican Revolution began. Multiple famous astronomers, such as Galileo, Tycho Brahe, and Johannes Kepler, supported Copernicus' model. Evidence of the heliocentric model being correct was proven by the use of mathematics and technology, which concluded that the heliocentric model is the true model of the solar system. Today we are going to talk about a famous Polish astronomer who changed how people saw the universe. Copernicus was born on February 19, 1473 in Turin, Poland, to a wealthy family. His father was Nicholas Copernicus Sr. and his mother was Barbara Watson Road, who were both successful copper merchants. Copernicus knew how to speak German, but some scholars believe he spoke Polish as well. His mother died around 1474 and his father passed away as well when Nicholas was just 10 years old. After Nicholas's parents died, Bishop of Ormia Lucas Watson Road took him under his protection and became his guardian. Copernicus's uncle impacted his education and future as a church canon. In 1491, at the age of 18, Nicholas Copernicus studied astronomy, mathematics, philosophy, and the sciences at the University of Krakow in Poland. He did not graduate after four years at the university in Poland, so Copernicus's uncle, Bishop Watson Road, sent him to Bologna, Italy to study canon law in 1496 until 1500. He was expected to study the laws and regulations of the Catholic Church and return home in Poland to become a canon. On the other hand, he spent more of his time studying astronomy and mathematics instead of canon law. His interest in astronomy grew when he was studying at Bologna, Italy. While studying at university, he lived and worked with an astronomy professor, Domenico Maria di Novara. He aided his professor with research and helped him draw observation of the heavens. At this time, Copernicus also learned Greek to read some of the original writings of some scientists. In 1501, Copernicus went back to Poland and became a canon through the influence of his uncle. He asked permission to return to Italy to study medicine and to finish his law doctorate at the University of Padua. In 1503, he obtained a doctorate in canon law. He finally came back to Poland in 1510, where he stayed in Freienburg to take his duties as a canon. He settled there for a while from 1510 to 1543. Copernicus lived in one of the towers of the cathedral. After his church duties, he would observe and study the night sky in his room from his window. During the time of Copernicus, most astronomers believed the theory that the Earth was the center of everything and it was motionless. Copernicus thought the theory was wrong. So Copernicus developed a celestial model of a heliocentric planetary system. Heliocentric meaning sun-centered. He proposed that the planets revolved around the sun rather than the Earth. According to his observations, the Earth rotates on its axis on a daily basis and that the Earth's motion affected what people saw in the heavens. Copernicus published the model in his book called On the Revolutions of the Celestial Spheres. He only distributed it to his friends because the church at the time believed that the Earth was the center of the universe. George Joachim Redicus, a mathematician from Germany, met Copernicus in 1593. He was the first person to adopt and share the heliocentric theory of Copernicus. Around 1541, Copernicus's health began to decline. Redicus urged Copernicus to publish his book. Copernicus's health got worse by the time he received his first printed copy of his work. Within hours, he died at the age of 70 on May 24, 1543. His theories made people think differently of the universe and became the foundation for scientists, such as Galileo and Newton, to build on and improve the understanding of the universe. 
Copernicus changed how people saw the universe. He carefully observed the stars and proved how the universe works. Even though he died more than 450 years ago, he is still considered as the father of modern astronomy. The reason scientists today know how the universe really looks like is because of Nicholas Copernicus.